-hmm. All right. Um, fancy presentation by HNS. Uh, and uh, thank you very much to Bree and Dan for organizing this. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually flew me into uh, from Melbourne to do this presentation. So mm -hmm. that's pretty big mm -hmm. commitment. I think that's an extra, just an extra step for an open source community. I think it's really cool. So uh, just a bit of info about me and my current title in the project is Enterprise Architect. I've got 14 years of experience working across the LAMP stack, uh, WordPress, Joomla, mobile, Drupal, everything. Currently technical lead at hide and seek and uh, going to be talking about cybersecurity in Drupal. And uh, uh, a lot of interesting things that I found along my journey as I was hacked multiple times. <laughs> I spent countless nights. Um, debugging and cleaning up websites with that architecture. There's some prizes, some small prizes and some quizzes too that are stuck in the presentation today. So Bree over there will give a super special prize. If whoever works out the secret gets special prize. Yeah. All right. So uh, just super brief. Um, uh, going to talk about essential eight, which is uh, I'll talk about it in a second. Uh, we'll talk about scanning, reporting, updating, firewalls, basically all the different things that you need to do in order to not get hacked. We'll talk about uh, self-hosting Drupal. Sometimes you need to do that, especially in the government requirements where you need to, um, uh, you know, when you are working in a high security workloads, you're you have your workloads running in Asia. They don't want to they don't want to share your data anywhere else, for example, Acquia backs it up to Tokyo region, right? And some some government would say, hey, I don't want it. I don't want my data to go to Tokyo. It's too sensitive. I want the data to be in Melbourne or in Sydney. And then they self-host it, and then they get into trouble. <laughs> uh, so we'll like, walk through that and walk the difference between enterprise uh, cloud hosting platforms, right? Acquia, Platform Stage, Einstar uh, versus uh, self-hosting it. What are the implications? What are the issues? Uh, there is a questionable ethical demo of hacking <laughs> live site on on the on the call. We'll try to do that as well. Um, uh, no, no, I had to do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and just uh, questions and summary. So, uh, starting with the story about Log4j. <laughs> oh, somehow everyone is like smiling. So, um, yeah, like. Um, this anyone had one of those on their own site ever? Oh, wow! <laughs> so what happens when you get one of those? It means it's too late. Your site has been injected. They've changed the payload. It's loading some JavaScript. It's loading, it, you know, whatever it's doing. Google Chrome picked it up, and it's telling everyone that it's bad. Your site disappears off Google. It's delisted. All that SEO effort you put in is gone. So multiple clients before poured thousands and thousands of dollars into SEO to try to get in page Google One. For example, yeah, one company I used to work before, right? Like fifteen thousand dollars on articles, blogs every month for five years. One of those, they're gone off Google for three months, they reappeared on page 16. Mm -hmm. it took years to climb back up. So it essentially destroys your site reputation. Um so uh, Back to Log4j story, it's very interesting because government really didn't mind that much what you're running, what kind of tools you can scan. It's just like, oh, the website's up, that's kind of it. And then uh, kind of privately I found out because working for some federal government clients that um, about 80% of infrastructure was affected by Log4j vulnerability. Data was stolen, stuff was deleted, removed, destroyed. And we're talking like big things, big blocks of government operation ports, uh, things like that, right? It, a lot of sensitive information leaked. Um, and uh, the government started to go, oh, maybe we should have a look at everything that hasn't been hacked yet and see what are we doing about it. And uh, then um, I got a call from a client uh, and they went, can you please tell us how you comply with Central 8? It's been there for a very long time. No one knows what it is, but we actually have to make sure that it's done. Can you please have a look at where we're at? And uh, can you please tell us um, uh, tell us uh, whether we're compliant or not and what we can do? Anyone uh, can work out mm, something not right with this PHP file? <laughs> <laughs> Everything is, looks a little bit out of place. 
Uh, so that's how this thing happens, right? So this is the end result. But your stat gets injected. I'll, I'll, I'll talk through different methods how it happens. And then your PHP file gets uh, a nice present, a nice extra a little bit of lines of code. This is uh, called a heuristic logic uh, injection, where the virus is so clever, it's actually encoding itself. So it does, if you try to match the pattern, it will not be the same. It will always be different in every sec because it's using some random string. It's passing a random string through base 64. It's encoding it. And you don't actually know what it is. It's probably uh, it's trying to you know, do one of the bad things that it does. So uh, going back to essential aid, the government brought to my attention that there's something called essential aid, which is a <laughs> cybersecurity maturity model that requires us to do a lot of things. Uh, so the, the, the definition is, yeah, so it's a framework for organizations, specifically the government, because it's developed by Australian government, to improve cybersecurity posture, reduce risk uh, of successful cyber attack. And it's a set of strategies, both for mitigation and remediation. Um, when I talked about it with the developers, like, hmm? yeah, no, we just write JavaScript, we like React. <laughs> it's like, yeah, React is the best. But then, okay, so then they, some of the stuff specific for Drupal would be, you know, patching, scanning, multi-factor, backups, network segmentation, and many more other things. But um, it's actually, uh, Drupal is really not there uh, because, uh, for example, when they when they told me, do you scan twice a day your dependencies in Drupal? We, we weren't even thinking like, is there a tool that does that? It, because um, you know, like say, if you're using Composer, uh, you have a dependency of the dependency of the dependency that is using a dependency that hasn't been updated for five years, mm -hmm. and then if that dependency is vulnerable, you get the red screen dead. Um, it's good on Acquia and platform message because they block the file system. So even if you get injected, they can't write. But I'll talk later about the self-hosted systems. That's where they can write to the file system very easily. Like, you know, we're talking Bluehost, CrazyDex, GoDaddy, Net Registry, all those um, shared hosting platforms that are cheap. And a lot of the government still use that and <laughs> is uh, very unfortunate because uh, there's no tools in place to mitigate that. So when it happens, it's too late. Uh, Drupal can be exploited uh, specifically. Most common one, 99% of SQL injection, uh, but there's also denial of service, distributed denial of service, file inclusion, cross-site scripting. Um, SQL injection is a really interesting one. We'll talk about that. We'll show some slides, and um, I'll talk about the denial of service one because uh, that's my favorite uh, one. This one here. Um, it's quite funny. So a company that's selling um, uh, you know, you 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 buy, um, you put money in the account, and you bet on horses. They make ninety percent of their money during their uh, races in Melbourne, right? And they get a phone call, but five days before the races, and the hacker says, "We're gonna bring your site down for one hour. Watch, watch." Then the site goes down for one hour, then it comes back up. Then they say, "Okay, we just want fifteen, whatever, hundred fifty thousand, three hundred thousand, one million dollars." Otherwise, during the races, your site goes down forever. You're not making money. And that's done using the sort of of service attack. So this vulnerable code that you saw might infect your computer to become part of the botnet, which will then form one of those attacks, become a participant in one of those mass attacks that will deny service to the um, yeah, to app. So this thing. And uh, protecting can be done with patching, obviously restricting privileges, multi-factor, backup, network segmentation, a lot of other things, um, which I'll talk about in a, in a moment. But uh, it will not help if you have really bad architecture in the beginning. So there's the little quiz that I uh, put on together today. So when uh, this is actually a real situation from my previous workplace, uh, there was an architect who said, you're just a dev. And he said, this is how all of our sites are handled. Um, and I went, yeah, yeah. Are you sure? Uh, so who wants to give a crack at, well, it's not that difficult, but who wants to try to see what potentially might be wrong with this? For security, performance, that's a HD access. Uh, that's how the DNS is handled for three sites. So that's the dedicated server with um, three directories in it. 
Okay. Yep. Anything else? Yeah, those those files might work in uh if there's a link that I need to get on page three on from the file. Yeah? Yeah. Lose one, lose them all is probably the so I think uh you deserve a gift. Wait, do we have a gift? Oh, 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 oh genius. <laughs> Write that down, everybody. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so Anyone else wants to pick up a couple of scenarios where this could go horribly wrong if this is not batch in production? They ran like that for two years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the Drupal get it was when I was employed there. <laughs> so that's a horror story, right? So uh, let's see. Anyone else wants to try? No, that's it. Um, okay, I'll, I'll try to summarize, right? IP address is only one IP. It's not masked by, it's not proxy through any CDN. If you do an S lookup, you see the IP, you can hit the IP. Um, all of the sites are on the same server in the web root directory, in public HTML directory. Uh, so when our, uh, when uh, we had, um, so that was, that was production and dev and stage. Uh, and that's how they had the HD access. Apache was routing traffic to uh, the three different applications. And as a result, um, when the Drupal getting happened and we got exploited in production, uh, every single PHP file got basically written. You got that base64 problem in there. It went all over the place. It then has infected all the backups because all the backups were in the same direction mm -hmm. too. And it corrupted all the backups and renamed all the files. And then it also screwed up the dev and the stage was were at it. The backups were on the same server with production and dev and stage. Um, and it was a self-hosted server because, um, <laughs> you know, uh, so if you try to do any antivirus on this, you already <laughs> lost your game. And uh, because uh, you're just asking for it here, right? So uh, with this system, um, I remember Drupal getting happened. Uh, everything got destroyed. I had to manually clean up 700 files because we didn't have a backup because every backup got destroyed. Then I went into the database and manually cleaned up the database. And then uh, it was done at 4 uh, a.m., uh, so 9 a.m. to 4 a.m., and I got a $100 gift card. So oh, that's pretty good. Lucky. Yeah. <laughs> um, the U.S. Um, era, the, the US uh, also had the same site, but someone else was managing the U.S. site, and they couldn't have cleaned it up, so they hired a cybersecurity agency to do it. And they got a bill of eighty thousand US dollars for emergency remediation from a consulting company, and they paid that bill. Mm -hmm. I find out later. Mm -hmm. None of the reason. So okay, so that's that's when we talk about architecture, infrastructure, blah blah blah, right? So obviously, if you're using a proper like a proper hosting solution uh, and not hosting it yourself or not trying to save money, you're using something big. You're never going to have that problem, right? You're going to have stage, fraud, everything, pipeline, CI, CD tools, backup, restores, all that stuff. Awesome. Uh, and then, of course, you have the code problems too. Uh, if anyone wants to give it a nah, see if there's a potential, maybe something not right here. Yeah? Yeah, <laughs> That's right. He just gets the input from the post, right? right. Yeah. That's it. So uh, <laughs> bad, bad, bad. <laughs> and so seeing a lot of that too. So the server's not prepared. We're not using. We're not taking advantage of the awesome APIs that we have in Drupal, Drupal API, blah blah blah. We are so here is an example of where we are passing it through for a name parameter, right? So it's you know rather than just writing the whole SQL thing. Uh, this will uh, make it much harder for an attacker to do. Um, but a very easy mistake, like three lines of code, red screen of death. If you're a government, you're screwed. Uh, if you are a, if you are using this for SEO, you build up good reputation, you drop, you're gone. Um, uh, yeah, Drupal um, Geddon. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what has, uh, yeah, so Drupal Geddon, um, 
tried using a GitHub repo, but couldn't make it work. We wrote thing in uh, Bash to make it easy. Uh, it, this uh, is really interesting. So the script is utilizes uh, just a normal library, 64 lines of code. It uh, because of lack of sanitization, um, the, the Drupal 837 and down and Drupal 737 and down did not have the sufficient input validation in the core. Uh, attacker could inject arbitrary code, basically run anything he wants, uh, and get access to the server and just run. To make a new file, he could uh, move the settings file where the database password is there, and uh, he could, uh, you know, could do a SQL dump and then download that dump uh, straight from the public directory. So easy. Um, uh, if anyone wants, I will plug the link. You can try it yourself. Um, I've set up a Drupal 8 site, um, and uh, all it takes, uh, this thing takes uh, one parameter, URL. And then the second parameter, any command you want to run in the, uh, as a shell. So you can go uh, touch index.html in a main directory, the whole thing is gone, and you just get a blank page. So that's easy. So easy. Uh, that's Drupal core, right? So what do we need to do? We need to make sure that, yeah, that's the GitHub repo if you're interested. Uh, let's read that look. Um, so obviously what the government wants us to do is it wants to scan every day uh, for dependencies, for using heuristic logic. We want to, so the heuristic logic scanner is a specific tool that scans the files for anything that might be a virus, but not sure. So for example, that base 64 encoding is an injection, but it's different on every site. So you can't like just do a comparison string to string, right? You need to kind of go, hmm, maybe that doesn't look right. So heuristic logic scanning is uh, a really important thing. And it, if it picks up, it's 95% chance there is a, a problem. But no, most people, have anyone heard about heuristic logic scanning daily? Many people have, no? Yeah. yeah. And it's, and so when I, they told me, okay, Diana, so how do you make sure we scan every, every day? I, I had to go, well, you know, actually, the tools are, are hard to find. If you ask other Drupal developers, how do you do that? They'll be like, hmm, well, I know maybe WordPress is easy, but uh, Drupal, like, how do you scan for log4j, which is a fourth level dependency in a composer file? How do you know that that's not the So So uh, here's a composer file for a client that we manage. Everything looks um, all right, except um, the problem is with. Um, and uh, this fastly module. Anyone has any idea why? Strict version. Perfect. Uh, strict version. We keep updating everything, but the fastly module is going to be 3.4. And when in one year later, when they hire someone else to manage it, some you know when the project is finished, they got someone else to do it for you. When um, that module becomes vulnerable, who will tell them that this is the one that? Can be like, can bring your whole Drupal ecosystem down. Uh, you need the scanner for that. And the scary one is that if the fastly module that's strict and locked to three fourteen, so see if it's like this, that means that it's at least two, but whatever the latest version is going to update, but that it will stick at three fourteen all the time, and uh, that's a really big problem. Uh, but a lot of people just ignore it. But uh, the fastly might be relying on a vulnerable component, so that needs to also be. Uh, Checked and scanned, and the government wants to do it daily. And uh, so we have to develop quite a lot of tools to do that. Uh, Site guarding is a really good tool that does uh, any PHP, uh, but it's a paid thing, but it's really cheap. It's 10 euros a month per site, Ukrainian company. Uh, same as audit.io, uh, started by a friend, uh, also does the same thing. Uh, firewall is really interesting. Uh, there's two types the way I see it the ones that work on instance and the one that works at CDN level. CDN level is really clever. This is a cloud player. I mean, Acquia gives it to everyone. Uh, uh, there's also Fastly and Akamai, AWS and WAF, and so many others. But this is a really good one because it recognizes that it, it scans for deep packet signatures of the attacks for injection payload. And then it's going to use AI to determine whether a request in real time might be a malicious request and it's going to destroy it without even touching your um, site. And it actually is actually free. You can proxy your site for that. It also gives you a free SSL certificate. And so it maintains a real time um, machine learning, the database, and signature based heuristics. So that's what we talked about the holistic logic. So there's a signature of how something gets exploited, what kind of payload is being sent. And that's how it will. Uh, 
uh, block it even before it hits your site. So uh, if you're proxying your DNS, if you pass over lots of hide your IP, if you then do a HTTP malformed HTTP request or injection of some signature that matches the logic that they know, it's going to destroy it before it even hits your site. So even though your site is vulnerable, you're not going to get uh, affected. Unless you're exposing your IP address, then you just hit the IP and it's gone. Uh, Cloudflare, I can, if anyone wants, this is a Cloudflare dashboard. Uh, you can put it under attack mode. Uh, ChatGPT is using Cloudflare at the moment because too many people, too many bots are trying to scrape it. So it's really good. Uh, it's really free. It gives you uh, lots of dashboards to understand where your attack is coming from. Also use this really effectively to block um, every country other than Australia for the clients because they keep getting spam and it works perfectly. That's good. Uh, Okay, I will see if I have time for remote code execution in a second. We've talked about heuristic logic scans. We've talked about antivirus mm -hmm. solutions. Antivirus solutions, it's a little bit too late um, when you run and have an antivirus because it's already been injected, already been infected. So, uh, but yeah, um, there are solutions. And uh, for example, so this GitHub repository is really good. It's a composer dependency security checker. Uh, it can be run as part of the CICD, uh, and what it will do is every time you generate your composer log file, it's going to scan it and tell you, hey, log4j is there, and it's not patched. And then it will not let you push the code, something like that. So, but that's a manual thing. So, that's like, there's no real tools that are out there that are, so that's a great opportunity to enter the market at the moment because the government needs it. However, Acquia, and no one's done it. Like, I've been trying to see if there's an all in the out of the box solution it doesn't exist, so we have to experiment. We have to do these things. Uh, hosting uh, is interesting, right? Because uh, Drupal's open source can be hosted everywhere. Platform such Acquia Pantheon essentially is safe because they're doing your own scanning, patching, and they're using Cloudflare, Fastly, CDN to actively kind of kind of like a you know that in uh, what is it in Israel? There's like this dome, uh, the dome, right? So the rocket is flying and the fence, yeah, and it just explodes the missile before it hits the land. But uh, if you don't have the CDN, you're on your own. You have to mm -hmm. kind of... Okay. Self-hosting, um, cheap, uh, but problem. Uh, because you have to do all this yourself. You don't get the support. Uh, Tenable, uh, anyone heard of Tenable before? Uh, it's really great. Uh, Tenable, uh, that's the Tenable website. It's a proprietary thing. It allows an agent, it can basically give you a Linux agent that you self host on your VMs and it will report uh, or and the scanning, but it will not send it online if you don't want it to be. So that's compliant with a lot of the essential aid. A lot of the antivirus solutions that are out there are not compliant with the Australian government because they are leveraging cloud scanning. So you have to kind of send your vulnerabilities out in the middle of nowhere to be scanned and then get a report. And that's an extra level of responsibility for governments that they don't like to take the risk. Tenable provides you a Linux uh, distro. You run it on your host, and then it's going to tell you everything that's wrong. And uh, so this business here, Intruder.io, I don't know if anyone heard of it, really popular, uh, is actually just uh, piggybacking of Tenable agents that are sitting there, and it's just using you know, APIing in and um, giving you vulnerability weakness. So that, it's all good. Uh, recap, no one's seen the red screen of death before. Seriously, yeah? I'm on a slide that I managed, but I've seen it before. No, I've been I've been brought into bits of site. The really self-hosted. Yeah. And then had like twenty sites and one of them going back into the Yeah. Gone. Gone. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's nice because I, I started to, to write, I had my own business and I was doing small websites in Drupal Joomla. And uh, I hosted them on shared hosts when I started. And I thought everything was going great. And then they just started getting hacked <laughs> and good to really talk. badly. Yeah. Good yeah. Uh, Drupal in itself is extremely secure. Um, yeah, normally, WordPress has and the modules because <laughs> it has a lot of issues. All right. That's my presentation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Ask away if you have any questions. I'll try to ask as much as I can. Uh, I have the risk of being this dumb. I, I, <laughs> I have yes, listed sir. a question more of like just an experience that I'd like to share. Um, uh, last year, we did a process of evaluating 
any virus providers put our clusters in New York and at all, um, alongside CrowdStrike. And you mentioned that like, once you're once you're at the point where any viruses so I think it's too late. Yeah. I wanted to say that I think that's still really I wouldn't suggest that people think that people walk away from them and not focus on it. It's, it's the antivirus that's telling you it's something to you. It is too late. You are infected. Something's going inside you. Yeah. Um, and what we found with terrible was that we didn't have a strong active scanning capability. So for example, terrible we can configure it to get a scan every hour or every day. But with CrowdStrike, it would be constantly online, constantly scanning. Right. And it was a surprise for us. But the other thing that we really like to like to do is to watch that thing. So we could say, for example, if somebody was accepting off the top we could raise an alert and so you can sort of not just see that there's a virus that's not known, but that there's a, a user, either yeah. malicious or not, who's kind of footprint and having a look around trying to see what might be one of those, and that can stop. Something from happening before it becomes clear. Yeah. yeah, that that's right. Um, in, and it is a requirement in essential aid. You know, <laughs> the, the government requires you to do antivirus. Um, and you know, I guess like for me, when I was a small business owner, it was this. The thing was, Google takes about three to four days to pick it up. Antivirus takes twenty four hours. Mm -hmm. So it's better that I find it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, let's have a look. Um, uh, oh, Hill uh, answered all the questions, um, but I didn't see. I'm so sorry. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> so, um, is there an argument for compile static hymns? So it's what, what, what? sites? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hold on a second. I'm trying to understand. Compile static. He wants to know if it, is there an argument for using the static site generators, I think. Oh. Like converting the triple site. Yeah, converting into triple site to Yeah, that's great. Static site. So uh Drupal is vulnerable because of the database mm -hmm. and PHP. If it's static, you can't hack a JPEG image. You can't hack a JPEG image on in an S3 bucket, right? You cannot. Well, <laughs> you can try. Uh, but uh, it will be impossible almost, right? So you can scrape your Drupal site. This is this is actually a really good strategy. Scrape the site once it's done, uh, but you have to make sure the contact form is not, it obviously won't be able to post to a PHP because it's scraped. So it has to post uh, to some API. Um, and as long as all you do is just, you know, do that, then if you stick that into an S3 bucket at an SSL certificate, you get secure scalable you don't have to worry about hosting it you only pay as much as you need for it because it's an s3 bucket and it's a static site so yeah absolutely um the scary thing uh, the reason why we are really worried about scanning is because so it's like injection through the most likely like an api web form api rest api or um if there's a contact form on your site if they just put a sql injection inside the contact form field they submit the form and it drops your database or dumps the output. So if there's no database, you can't really change. You can't really edit a static site, which is really good news. So that's a great question. Um, and that's like an ultimate <laughs> um, ultimate solution for security. But uh, static site. Yeah. That's what Brett just said. If there's only no such, sorry, if there are only no such thing as content updates. Well, you it's could. Not too so. bad. Still, you can, there are things you can do to. Mm. You can use like time module, for instance. Mm -hmm. Like that's just a simple module that just static, just makes site static. Mm -hmm. So yeah, as long as you don't have a contact form, it's really good because anytime you make a content update, you just press time and mm -hmm. you compile, and you just make the disk directory your root directory. Yeah, uh, or, or you could RGP into a protected VM where oh. Drupal lives. Do your content updates. You have like uh, RGP accounts for everyone who needs to do an update with SSO. And then uh, once you finish your CI CD pipe, I would scrape it and just uh, okay. commit it as HTML static. Easy. No, super solution. Someone says that they had a static Drupal site, but it still got hacked via the Linux kernel. Oh, well. If the hacker really wants to get to his site, there is. What were no you doing? Solution. Well, I'm yes. S3 bucket. S3 Sorry. bucket. Sorry, John's speaking. I was trying to turn my sound up. Oh, come on. Did you want to speak? 
Oh, yes. Uh, I would like to say, um, yes, there was a, a static website on Drupal 6 I made, but it was hacked because the hacker get paid very good. So if you're the hacker get paid very well, there is no solution. Yeah. If you're desperate and you offer a lot of money, you'll find a way. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, <laughs> even with a straight bucket, there's still the root credentials and I am credentials and AWS CLI and people use uh, install that in their terminal and then they, you know, don't touch the Mac at home and then boom, um, they get some someone Microsoft support or a team viewer logs in to help you out, right? <laughs> and then boom, on your back, on your yeah. back. <laughs> And uh, that's how Uber got hacked, right? Um, um, yeah, I am credentials in the cloud. Yeah, sorry. No, I, 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 yeah, so that's why. So I just have a question now. When you say Drupal is under the wall, starting to uh, is it possible, like, you know, to just manage the SQL engine with government? Yeah. Which is, which to reduce is, it, or like, or some you can say, like, you can decouple the database from the, but the, I guess the, 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 the logic behind the attack is like this. Here, I have a, a PHP file, right? Um, the PHP file will load something from the database. Uh, if if PHP, like, see how that file is injected, right, in the very beginning. Um, just give me a second. So. How did that happen? Does it matter if it's like a Postgres or MySQL or RDS? No, uh, because uh, they injected the database because some query here, like that input, right? Like what we talked about the code thing. If it's not sanitized properly, they will inject it. So it doesn't matter what back what database you use. The only way to stop hacking is to make it non non um, yeah make it static and remove the database. If there's a uh, Programming language behind the scenes that generates uh, dynamic content, you're gone unless you're protected. Um, but I think, like, if you stop um, PHP files being written using Linux tools, like what host professional hosts do, like Acquia, right? Like, you commit to prod. Even if I try to, even SSH to prod, I can't. Uh, I can't like edit the file using Vim or anything like that. Yeah. So uh, read only. It's very good. Uh, but anything with a database uh, is hackable. Everything, but then imagine you just have an image, in a, 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 you just uh, have a, a photo, a JPEG on on the link. Like you can't hack it. it there's nothing to do there, right? So <laughs> I know, I know, <laughs> I know you can, yeah. But you know, for all intents and purposes, that's right. There we go. Mm -hmm. So many. I just have a lot of questions because um, I have a lot of questions. I have to do some great read. No, it's great. It's just really <laughs> complicated at once. Just have a clip for me, mate. Wow, look at that. Oh, yes. Alex, how did you get that? Yeah, so what what do you think actually the Drupal uh function actually in the search query Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because the actually. You have to read it, it's too complicated. Uh when I got an email <laughs> from the government, it was like this. Make sure it's patched, make sure it's scanned, and we know when something goes wrong. Make sure it's up to date. Anything critical has to be up to date the same day. Everything non-critical has to be up to date within two weeks. Um, and uh, then they wanted, and so, and then of course they wanted to have like logging system. If someone tries to guess the password three times from the same IP address, it goes into the log, and then that gets analyzed. The way the way my understanding is this um, uh, essential uh, it works is uh, let's see, Pedrosa, is you have multiple maturity models. One, two, three, four, five, whatever. And you need to get it to at least maturity model uh, one, which is like the most uh, 
at least you're doing something. And then once you complete that, you move to the next and next and next maturity model. And it gets really. I think then if you're the slide you've got where it's sort of backups and multi factor and uh -huh. I think that's probably the best thing to do. It's certainly the most constrained. Yeah. Or, like, like, so we get probably enough questions about stream mm. And more importantly, you know, it helps me jump through a bunch of groups to the developer and security team on top of the security team within the departments. So, you know, it's, it's for them, their problem. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, obviously, that's what we're for us, but these are the ones that we know more. Consumable than I've got project moving up there where someone has done really expensive to the modern factors. When we talk about the other ones, you know, the real processes against this using hard. Um, yeah, first time you can this. This is this is this is if you do that, I think you would be level one. Uh, and then the next maturity model, um, you can spin up another project with a client or something like that. But I, I would just emphasize, even if you don't need to compile with something, um, if you've got a Drupal site, have this. Um, again, don't go to production without this. There's a, there's a lot more I think. Yeah. I don't know if you check them all the news, but it's um So yeah, I mean, I've learned a lot about hacking through really Hard, you know, because I, there were tens and tens of sites that were ejected nonstop. And uh, so um, if you work in an enterprise, it's much less likely to occur. But if you work in small business and they don't really go for big platforms, it's much harder. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, uh, if, yeah, any, uh, let's see, does anyone else ask? Oh. Okay. okay, regarding hack via JPEG, uh, Bagzad says inject malicious code into the pixels of a photo. Uh, is of a hacking and transferring secret messages. Yes. I've always thought this Yeah. There's there's a lot of funny stories. Like I'd love to tell you all. It's just I don't have enough time. But oh, <laughs> so many. And it's obviously you've, you've quite a few different points there. Is there something that you've seen more often? Is there something that really stands out for people who can't do? More to it? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're, 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 you're exactly right. Uh, how many Drupal projects are you running? Who, please lift your hand up if you are up to date today on all your modules, all of them. On the projects that I'm managing currently, yes. Yeah. <laughs> what are you on? You just started a new job. What are you on, Brian? I've got two projects, thank you very much, that I updated today. But we're talking about, like, Tiny MCE latest version, all the non required. Probably not, but I suspect that is going to be good because that's probably from your project thing. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, so one of the things with multi-factor, as I see all the time, the government has to go through a crazy process to give you SAML access. They will, that SAML access will stop working if you haven't logged in for the last three days or two days or one day. And then they're like, hey, can you build a backdoor? Can you just build a query string? And then if I pass an argument through a query string, then we just go to Drupal login instead of the SAML, just to make it easier. Just while we're working on it, so. Oh, well, Samuel kind of is. Well, yes, because you are managing it using Azure B2C or Active Directory or LDAP, right? So uh, you are off, um, you are offsetting the you're outsourcing the authentication to uh, the managed provider. So. And, uh, injection that if this is just for access so if someone stole your password they can edit the article uh if it's injection it doesn't work they just if there's a contact form on your form they just inject it see you later yeah mm -hmm. 
in SSO, or sample modules in the store. Some of them are part of the core, they are part of the core, they are part of the So you can use those and rely on the kind of pretty good at measuring that. So you can get something and you get an idea and you get a model and it's pretty good. Whereas if you're just using it, you can. And then with that beautiful Asia um, uh, MFA, Uber got hacked with that. Yeah, because they just went, the attacker stole the person's password through a link. Then he went, authenticate, 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 authenticate. The guy started getting multiple messages to authenticate oh, the request okay. in Authenticator. Then the, he just got an email from the support saying, please, can you approve it? We're just testing it. And he clicked approve. So that's it. So sneaky. Yeah, so go on. Yeah. You know, as you said, and still, um, you can't recommend the web and the budget was not very, very good. Yeah. And now, you know, would you recommend it? Use Platform for free. You don't get the grant for free with them. You get the same one, but the grant is still low. It's $20, right? Something like that. 75 US a week. A month. Yeah. For the main, there you go. 75 per month for the main. Uh, if you can't afford that, um, maybe AWS. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. you got to do that. Cloud Flash, really good deal with the box. Cloud Flash, you got to keep it. I think I think Azure CDN is it's cheap. It's cheap. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Not all the time. Can you share the um, slide? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, this is on this will be on YouTube okay. next week or so. <laughs> next week or two. <laughs> See you in a month, March. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh no, we haven't done any slide sharing, just some YouTube. No, they'll um, be visible. They'll be visible. Um, depends if you want. If did you want to like click through them? Yeah. 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 If you so want to know some of the, the content to be. Oh, there's nothing. There's uh, nothing else, uh, to too scary in the code. Um, oh, uh, no, it's no, all on yeah. GitHub. I open source the exploit. If you use running <laughs> eight zero zero in your <laughs> server, it's you, you just one click to. Yeah. It's yeah, you actually can run shell commands as root uh, through Python by modifying HTTP requests to do this. Incredible. Um, what fun. I love the internet. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Awesome.